Alrighty, we are digging for wisdom. We are on Thanksgiving week. This is what one of the, there's several goals each team has, but practicing on Thanksgiving is definitely one of them. So if you're practicing tomorrow, I believe this airs on Wednesday, when you practice tomorrow, be happy about it. It makes the turkey taste even better when you when you take a bite into it knowing that you have a game the next day. It actually holds you back on your diet. You probably don't eat as much as you do when, uh, like a West Mesquite is this week or, or Panther Creek. They're going to tear through the mashed potatoes. They're going to go two, they're going to go three rounds on the deviled eggs. What do they have to play for no more? Nothing. But you guys over there at Lone Star and, and Reedy, for crying out loud, you guys have stuff to play for because you're practicing on Thanksgiving. Uh, I'm here with Matt Diggs, the professor, as y'all know him. I'm the wizard. We're going to dive into some some uh, playoff week action, regional semifinals. But Diggs, man, you, you got front row and center of a couple of the bigger collapses we've seen in the playoffs of all times. Uh, congratulations to you for that. While I sat to a couple of the biggest blowouts that you probably well not the biggest but blowouts. Yeah, it, it was quite the uh, it, it was quite the day for the quite the game choice selection for me because I picked two teams to win by one point, which is my universal sign for an upset. Both of them had two score leads in the fourth quarter, and both of them lost in overtime. It was. <laughs> quite the collapsing uh, time. And that wasn't even the biggest story. You know, we would have had to go down the road uh, to Corsicana to get the big, biggest story of Frisco Reedy coming back from 38 down. That game was 45 to seven with two minutes left in the second quarter and Frisco Reedy with the win. And that remember to Azel Saginaw. I mean, we have had some of the craziest things happen in DFW football, but the even crazier thing when you start, when we start going through our uh, presentation here in a little bit we nailed just about every single regional semifinal as we talked about from week one we're like i'll just fast forward after thanksgiving because these games are all good they're all here like everything we talked about we could have taped this podcast two weeks ago and been pretty right been done with it exactly i mean it played out the way we predicted it and and it's exciting too because now that we got to these games these are games that are really going to make you think about who you're going to pick each week. I know there's a there's a handful of them that maybe last week you're just like, hey, you know, it's the, like, for instance, the game I was like, oh, Wakeland might want that revenge factor. But you weren't going to pick Wakeland. You were going to pick Highland Park, and we were going to move on to the next one. But now you have some games that you're – I mean, you, you'd have to sit there and think of, okay, if this, this, and this happen, then maybe Wakeland can win or, or lose by a point. This one you're really going to have to think this week because you got some games, especially 5A Division two. Those games are just going to be fun, uh, fun to watch. We're going to get into all of those. I don't know if you want to get into it now or not, but I, I definitely now, want to. Ward. Let's bracketology. Let's get, into, let's get into the bracketology. Let's talk about some of the deals that we've set up for you, and how we can talk about how correct we are naming the regionals because you are correct on every single one of them. My man Dixie's one. done it again. We got some undefeated playing on. We got undefeated playing in the North Crowley bracket on uh on saturday uh over at newsom at 2 p.m this one is is interesting because they all have they have three big running backs on both sides and i call running backs but the quarterback is the running back you got jimerson you got bray you got warren on one side you got bakway you got you got uh, josh lock and you got griffin on the other side but north crowley's got that daggone x factor and we've talked about we call it the q factor the daggone q factor the man that scores touchdowns nonstop, he's been uh, the favorite target over there in Quentin Gibson. That's why I'd probably give him the edge, plus their their defense is so tight up front there. I saw that live in the Byron Nelson the second half there. But tell me what you think about this one. You know, I actually disagree with you just a little bit. Overall, I think we're going to have the same choice. But North Crowley's defense is good, but it's not, I don't think it's Allen level. I don't think it's Highland Park level. Therefore, good offenses can score on it. We've already seen that this year with DeSoto and Lancaster uh, putting up big points, and then North Crowley has to win in offensive shootouts. And I think Coppell's offense is right up there with DeSoto and and, and Lancaster's offense. Uh, But I think it's just one of those things. North Crowley has really good coaching, and that's not taking anything away from Coppell. And they just have this focus right now that, you know, they've, you know, it's kind of that math 
this manufactured chip on the shoulder right now. I think Coppell, I can see the path for Coppell to win. I can see with the perfect game how Coppell can win the game. But Coppell hasn't given us a perfect game this year. Uh, therefore, I think just kind of at their base levels, North Crowley is probably a two-touchdown favorite. And I think this is a game that might even vacillate from two to three to two to three touchdowns as opposed to a game that's one to two, one to two kind of a, a game. Uh, so North Crowley's going to win a game in a game that I think is going to be high scoring, uh, a lot of points, uh, but I just don't think Coppell has the defense to stop North Crowley for any sort of consistent uh, time period. That's the key, and they cannot be down two scores at halftime and expect to do like they did against Prosper and come back. By the way, dropping back one one bracket level here, Lake Highlands, for some reason Christian Rhodes really impressed my guy Pat Doney. He's blowing up my phone. So I'm like, he must be having a great first half. He had 33 yards in the first half on 10 carries. I was like, yeah, I don't, what, what's so impressive? I know he's an impressive guy, but I want to know why you think he is. But he never did tell me. He said, you're going to have to get a bobblehead ready. I said, if I'm getting a bobblehead ready for everybody that gets 33 yards on 10 carries in the first half, then I got about 1,000 bobbleheads to get ready. But anyway, that was a big one for Capel. This game is going to be nice because it, it leads into the next one. Trinity against Allen. The winners play each other. Uh, will play the winner of this game. And this game is interesting to the fact Allen is, is, I believe they've given up a touchdown or less in four of their last five games. Their their defense is playing super tight. I don't Obviously, I don't think they're going to give up seven. I think they're probably giving up 20 to a Trinity team with that kind of speed and that big offensive line is probably the same as seven to everybody else. How's Trinity going to slow down Allen, who's not known as an offense juggernaut, but they've sure put it on Richardson for sure. Yeah, I mean they're good and they're a good offense against average to above average defenses, but against elite defenses, which there are not many in six A, they they do wilt a little bit. Man, this is a game you talked about how I have to really think about it because I got a chance to watch a little bit of that Ulysses and Midland Legacy game uh, on TV, and Trinity is it just looks like a different team from what I even saw at the beginning of the year, some of the highlights you filmed, Ward, and even what I saw last year. Ulysses Trinity's defense is on fire. They are. Are, you know, they, they attack the ball. They're kind of a risk reward kind of a defense to where they're going to take some risk, but it kind of pays off. And Trinity has a lot more playmakers on the offensive side of the ball than Allen does. So it's one of those things that I, I see the pathway for Trinity and God, if, if, if it weren't for, if Trinity hadn't let me down so many times the last three or four years, I'd probably take him as an upset pick. Uh, but I just think Allen has been more consistent defensively. And uh, I, I would, I, like, I, the, the, the Balding Eagle Booster Club, the BEBC, which they do a podcast for Allen, they've been fact checking me over the last couple of weeks. And they, and they, they found a lot of errors uh, when I get into Allen. Like, I, I messed up the Allen score. I messed up the wide receiver. I called him Orangey. That's the Forney receiver, as you probably know. You know, it's Donnell G. And then uh, I messed up the uh, – I called him a de defensive, line uh, de defensive lineman and wafer, but he's a linebacker, and I messed up his name too. So I'm, I'm sorry. Japri. Japri. Not Jabri. Japri. Pa -pa 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 -pre, like, like, <laughs> like a little pasta salad. So I'm sorry, Allen, for all the errors. And I messed up the Allen and, and Louisville scores, 18 to 17, not 20 to 19 the last uh, last year. So I, I probably just messed something up and just reciting all of the things they kept telling me that I'm wrong about. But hopefully they're not having to correct me on this one because I'm going to take Allen by seven. But man, that's an easy game where a special teams play, a, a turnover, all of a sudden this is going to flip to Euless Trinity. I just don't think Euless Trinity has the kind of defensive presence that can consistently force takeaways. Now, if you throw a, if you throw a stupid pass into triple coverage, you know, Trinity can get those kind of turnovers. I just don't think they can force turnovers like Allen can. Right. And that's a fun time, too. They're playing at 5 o'clock uh, at Dragon Stadium Friday, which is, is – it's – Close to a Jerry Jones special, but we'll talk about Solana Aubrey. They played at the, a specific Jerry Jones time where the sun is, there's going to be shadows galore all over the place for the first half. These guys picked the exact right time. Nobody's staying out late, and it's going to be dark from five on. So I'm always telling you stuff from a photographer's point of view. We don't have to deal with no shadows there. Should be a nice one. Let's go to Division Two, my guy. We got, or Region Two, we got Duncanville in the Woodlands. Two. They're going to be playing right outside of Austin in Hutto. We'll actually have highlights of that one. We've got a guy on vacation in Austin, so I cut down the vacation told him to get to work for me, at least for a half, because I think that's all it'll take for Duncanville to stand. But, boy, when, when, here's the deal. When Duncanville's ready to go, they're ready to go, and they're usually ready to go by week two. 
you know, because they've already they took week one off and they're ready to go. They took care of Rockwell. Rockwell's got a decent team, but every time they play up against a, a team like this, they didn't give up seventy, but they gave up pretty close to it. And the Woodlands took out Cy Rance. That was an impressive win. Uh, they won by a nice margin, but Cy Rance is nothing compared to what they're going up against here. Like I said, they got the great quarterback in Jack Dalton, but it's I, it's just not going to be able to pick apart. This. You can play as neutral as you want. You can play this thing on the move uh, and, and have no fence there, and Duncanville would still win this thing by three scores at least. Yeah, you mentioned neutrality, which is another fact check I got. Because if you remember, I was hard on North Crowley last week about that flip uh, situation where I was like, man, because of thinking about next year. Apparently, it was Odessa Permian that forced that, not North Crowley. North Crowley wanted to uh, get that as a neutral site, but they lost the flip to force the flip. And then they lost the flip that made it, or I guess they won the flip, uh, which made it ultimately their game. Uh, so maybe Odessa Permian is playing a little bit of 3D chess when it comes to that. Uh, but I mean, you nailed this perfect. And also, uh, one thing I got corrected about with Rockwall is that they did play Lake Travis very uh, very early in the season pretty well, and that's a state-ranked team. So uh, they, it hasn't been all bad for Rockwall this year. Uh, but, man, Duncanville, again, it's just – it, it they, they win so comfortably, it looks boring. I mean, they're playing really, really good football teams. These are, I don't know, where, where, where would you say the Woodlands is ranked in Houston top 15 area? Yeah, they're, they'd be in the, they definitely, be a, they're a top 10 team when we do the coaches. Top 10 they, they fall and in they're just nine. beating top 10, you know, Houston area teams and DFW area teams like it's just nothing. Okay. I mean, it's just like at 56 to 12 or 56 to 14. I mean, they are just on another level and that's why that's kind of the reason why we're so right on these things is because there are levels to this and Duncanville is on such a different level right now. I mean, we're, it's going to be even, next week there's not it's going to be the same thing whether it's Bridgeland or Waxahachie. It's going to be into next it's going to be into 2 weeks before we have even any sort of X's and O's and strategy conversation right. to talk about with Duncanville. So we can even figure it out. And we talked about this earlier when we started the whole playoff deal with Region 2 in Houston. This is this is their cap. This is where they they try to get to week three. Like week three, Duncanville's like, yes, we're practicing on Thanksgiving. Well, Thanksgiving Day, the Woodlands are going to be finishing up practice and talking about their best memories as a team. And it was great playing with you this year. Oh, I, I loved it when you, you told me this joke on the bus. It was hilarious. I'm going to miss these times when it's all over in two days because that's that's their cap. They know what's going to happen, and it's going to happen. So that's too bad for them. But Let me get your opinion on something, Ward, because you just reminded me of a little bit of a controversy from two weeks ago uh, that uh, there was a, a TikTok video that went uh, viral where uh, the Temple players, after they lost to Duncanville, they all got around the quarterback and were doing, like, film, like, pictures, like, hey, can we get your picture and, and all of that. And a lot oh, of people yeah. thought, is that really what you need to be doing after you lose a football game? But, you know, it's like they're so starstruck after, you know, playing Duncanville. Everybody just wants to go talk to these uh, stars for Duncanville. And, you know, when you got Keelan Russell up there, like, oh, this is going to be, you know, a famous player one day. Uh, what do you think about that? Where do you think opposing players should be going after the game and getting pictures with Duncanville players right now? Not not to be not to be filmed on TikTok. If you want to do that stuff, kind of wait outside the locker room or go to the bus and do that mess. I mean, that's what I was going to say for the Woodlands. They're they're wait they want to get as lengthy into the game before they hit the wow factor. Like, oh wow, this team is that much better than me. But if they don't find that out until late in the second quarter, well, maybe that's a win for them. But if they find that out right off the get go and like. Oh, I didn't realize I was going up against this, then it's going to be a long night. Maybe they will start working on uh, getting their little pads of paper ready for autographs or what have you. And get ready for – if they have a team like Highland Park does where they have about 150 players dressed out from JV on the back, I couldn't even get around these guys. I said maybe some of those guys will get in there in the second half and get a little taste of some of this, uh, some of this Duncanville magic here. But you look in the bottom half, I say this, but maybe – Maybe is is Britsland a team that can maybe pass that dream on? Maybe they're not saying this stuff at Thanksgiving. Maybe they can beat Wax. I don't think they can, but maybe they can. They, they beat Conroe pretty good, but, you know, Conroe was just happy to get that first playoff win since early 2000, I believe, and they they took care of it. They played a lot better against them than they did against Klein Oak. Uh, but are they good enough to handle a Wax team? I don't know. I don't think they are. I think it'll be closer than you think. But uh, you named this region after Bridgeland, but I still think Wachahatchee moves on. 
You know, this this is a game that by the time you, you see my picks on Thursday, you're getting your turkey, you're getting your stuffing or whatever you do. I think you do like fried meatloaf or some sort yeah, of crazy deviled meatloaf. eggs or something. Who knows what you're, we're doing at the Ward household. I, I may change my mind twice, but I, I, I got to watch Waxahachie against North Forney a little bit. And I just think, you know, uh, Jerry Myers getting a little bit healthier. Uh, Bridgeland gave me a little bit of style points against Conroe. Uh, so, you know, I felt like, okay, you know, I'm, I'm seeing a little bit because that game against Klein Oak, I did not see anything yeah, uh, yeah. that made me impressive. And, and I expected Waxahachie to beat North Forney by three touchdowns. So it wasn't necessarily style points right. from Waxahachie. I just think they're going to wear them down the bigs, the infrastructure, the offensive and defensive line. And almost every single time when you're getting these Houston area against DFW teams, the Houston team's got to be like two or three touchdowns better than the DFW team just to win by a score. It just seems like there's that kind of disparity, unless you're talking about the, the big dogs in Summer Creek and, and uh, uh, North Shore. And I think Bridgeland is probably a little bit of a computer favorite, uh, you know, maybe a four to five point favorite. I don't think that's enough to beat DFW area schools when you, when you have to travel. Uh, so I'm with you, Ward. I think Waxahachie is, is a very slight favorite. And Waxahachie just doesn't make a lot of mistakes. And given how Brid Bridgeland played Klein Oak a little bit closer than I thought, I, I think they might be inclined to make some mistakes. Yeah, and they're already starting to practice their trick plays, too, that they need for round three. Uh, in, in that Conroe game, they did the, the play where you pitch it to the running back, he runs that way and throws it back to the quarterback. Usually you see that around the 10. They did it at the 50. And just let the quarterback run for 35, 40 yards. They're pulling out all the stops and see which one works, and maybe it'll work against Wax, or maybe they're trying to hold on to they face Duncanville. If that happens, who knows? I don't think it will. But how about that game on social media? Didn't y'all have that clip that you're just describing on? Yeah, like, exactly. The, that my Houston man, side? one of the Harris boys, are out there, okay, doing his thing. A Harris boy handling his. Well, business. why are you sending them to that part of Texas? Come on, they don't want to go any south. They will stay up north of Houston. That's about it. Then they get out of there real quick. Like, all right, Region 1, Division 2, Crowley, Denton, Guy are playing over at, at Mustang Panther on Saturday at 2. That's in the Jerry Jones curtain area. But I will let my man Pox deal with that because I won't be messing with it. Crowley wins, and you're happy about that. But it's they certainly didn't win you any style points. They were probably lucky to get out of there with the victory. They got some gifts in that game. And then Denton Geyer took care of Pierce. We both kind of predicted that one. Richardson's got a mighty offense, but all of our ISD had to, had to leave the playoffs after the second round. But good on them for making it that far. Geyer, they got a quarterback that's no longer going to Oklahoma. Now he's going to Florida State. Uh, he downed his competition a little bit and decided to go ACC-wise. But Kevin Speary is going to be going up against that Crowley team. That Man, that team makes me nervous, brother. It does. It, you know, I, I watched that Midland uh, Crowley game, a good chunk of the game, and it was 19 nothing at halftime. But again, that was a lot of self-inflicted uh, mistakes from, from Midland. But uh, the quarterback for Crowley looked great at, at, at times, and the defense was able to really uh, stop some of that triple option. I mean, they stopped him at the four-yard line at one time, and they got a fumble, then they got a 60-yard fumble return. But then once Midland got it going and was running downhill, if it weren't for that fourth and one play with about a minute and a half left, uh, I, I would not have wanted to see Crowley have to defend that one more time. They're able to get out of there with uh, the four minute offense was able to take advantage of things. Uh, but again, we talk about levels to this and, you know, I think there's a little bit of a level to get to that state championship level, but Geyer is a level above Crowley right now. And I think that uh, Geyer is going to take care of business uh, probably in a pretty convincing way, two or three scores. Uh, Crowley just, I mean, I, I love I love their skill players, but you know, for, for, from probably fifteen to twenty five, fifteen to thirty, the, the fifteen to thirtieth best players, Denton Geyer is going to have such an edge on, on them on the depth where that they're just going to wear them down. You know, and Tavius Ellis, he may make a big play for you, uh, but you know, who you know, their quarterback, but. Geyer's got defensive guys that can make plays, linebackers that can make plays, Sperry can make plays, running backs that can make plays. I just think Geyer's got way too much depth and will take care of Crowley pretty convincingly. I do like Caleb Williams. You mentioned the quarterback over there, Crowley. He said, unsung over there. How far can this guy tee? Because we're going to talk about this next game. Now we got an a, a, a injury bug squad here with South Lake Carroll where they're losing their whole entire backfield. We got a Hebron team that has a quarterback now that has completely grasped the concept of what's going on over there in Patrick Patrick Creighton Jr. 
they seem to be on a roll. Is this an upset watch game just because of uh, the injuries that South Lake's dealing with? Yeah, this is absolutely an upset. I mean, this is like the perfect storm that is happening right now for Hebron and South Lake Carroll. Uh, Friendship got 524 yards. We talked about how Carroll's defense is really going to have to handle them. And Friendship has to be looking at things like, man, if this would have happened, if this would have happened, you know, we could have uh, won that game. Uh, The name to watch out for was South Lake Carroll. We don't know. Davis Penn got injured in that game. Uh, He only had five carries for five yards. And then uh, a lot of people think, you know, we thought that with Davian Gross at, at, at times, so we, we don't like to speculate on injuries and, and what's going to be there, but the name Christian Glenn, uh, and that last name might sound a little bit familiar to you, Ward, because that is Terry Glenn's uh, offspring, so you got some NFL lineage, you got some NFL lineage here in this Hebron uh, versus South Lake Carroll game. I know you don't like having dealing with any of that, especially today, uh, but I, I think South Lake Carroll is really being tested with depth, and the defense has got a couple of injuries, you know, not necessarily big names like Van Dorsalier or anything that you would be really concerned about, but the, you know it, the depth for South Lake Carroll is really concerning right now. And Hebron has shown that they can put up the kind of scores that Friendship has put up. This is definitely on upset watch. But man, you, you give Riley Dodge a week to fix some of these issues and to get kind of a week to game plan and to go, okay, this is what our team looks like now. How can we deal with that? I got to take Carroll by a score. I mean, we were talking about how Carroll was going to be just winning all these games by three, four, five touchdowns. It's now down to one touchdown hard fought games. I can't pick against Carroll in the third round, but man, this is really, really close at this point, much closer than I thought it was going to be when we were doing our brackets two or three weeks ago. Yeah. And we're going to play this one over in Irving at the, the joy and Ralph Ellis stadium, uh, two thirty on Friday. Um, this could be the boat. Oh, new game. If he makes, can make some plays on defense, that versatile defender for Hebron, he's, he plays safety, he can bounce around the linebacker. If he can find his way through the line and, and, and make some plays and get some negative plays going that way, maybe this does turn the tide a little bit. But we will see what happens. Uh, I can't go against Carroll either. It's, it's, it's too difficult. And don't make me do it, Diggs. I'm not going to do it. I know you're it's Mr. Lewis hard. or ISD, but man, it, it just seems like, you you, you know, if, if we would swap the uniforms, if we put all the Hebron kids in dragon uniforms, I'd probably take that version yeah. of South Lake Carroll to win as well. But Hebron just hasn't been here right now. And I mean, we're going to have the blonde hair and the state of Texas and the trash cans and all of that tradition. And kind of what we'll be talking about uh, just on the other side of the DeSoto regional, that's what got Longview through their game. And I think there is something yeah. to be said, just that winning culture, winning tradition when things get tough, you take that deep breath. You, I, I know you don't know how to do this, Ward, especially with your NFL fans. Just take that deep breath. Mm. It's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. Mm-hmm. I think it's going to be okay mm-hmm. with South Lake. I just don't think it's going to be convincingly okay, and I certainly don't think that they're going to win against the winner of this regional anymore. All right. We First of all, we agreed not to talk NFL today, Dad Gummit, because I'm very upset. I don't want to talk about it. Let's get into this DeSoto about Willis breathing game. Ward. Like, go down oh, the call breathe. map. The call map. Just breathe. I can't. I'm riled breathe. up. God bless it. I'm ri- Why can't he make extra points? All right. Sorry. I'm all right. I'm going to be okay. Uh, fight for all DC. Yeah, Panthers are quick right. field goals. Why not? Last, last Why? week. Why can't last, Lancaster yeah. hold on to the ball with a minute left at the 50? We're not at that one Just yet. We're here at DeSoto him. Willis. Just Cut the ball! Do a quick kick on third down. Just do something. <laughs> do something. We're at just. All right, you're wandering into a different bracket. We're talking to Soto, DeSoto Willis right now. You asked me a week ago. I would have said Willis has a heck of a chance against DeSoto. Uh, watching the highlights against the Tom Ball game, this seems like it's now a officially a one team, a one trick pony. It's a heck of a trick because he plays all over the field. He knocked their. He, matter of fact, he knocked their quarterback out. He knocked the Tom Ball's quarterback out at the one. Had he not get knocked out, they would have ran it in on the fourth down, uh, down there at the four yard line in the fourth quarter, and probably scored. And we'd be talking about Tom Ball DeSoto, but instead we're talking Willis DeSoto. Uh, once again, there's some sort of flip situation that didn't work out in Willis's favor because they, they're dying to get that game in Houston. Now they're coming up here to the Star on Saturday night. And they're dealing with the DeSoto team that really put their running uh, game into effect last week. They got 300 yards out of the Tiger Tiger ride, and they finished with like 390 on the on the game. Uh, they didn't have to go to the pass. I, don't, I think Booby Feaster maybe got two targets the whole game. It was, it was completely unnecessary. So they're, they'll be fresh. 
So what do you think about this one, buddy boy? I think DeSoto by probably two scores at least. Yeah, DeSoto just has too many weapons because, I mean, even though it was a little bit shaky in the Duncanville game when they had to kind of go the aerial assault, you got to feel with Kelton Ryan and uh, Booby Feaster and a couple of those receivers that they have the capability to air it out if they need to against, you know, if there's a matchup that is favorable for them. Uh, but the fact that you can just pound the rock and behind that big offensive line, I think that that that's the they can keep it simple against Willis and probably win that game by two or three scores without having to complicate it. Uh, but like you, I, I know you even kind of alluded to playoff Tom Ball being a team that, you know, gets, you know, is a little bit better than their record might indicate when they get to the playoffs, a little bit of a pedigree, even though they don't have a super defining, you know, a state championship run. But, you know, they have, I guess you said, a state semifinal run and a fourth round run a couple of, in the yeah. last five years. But they're a tough out. You know, they're always a tough out. But the fact that Willis didn't get the style points and DeSoto has been showing us the style points. Yeah, I think it's a, especially up here, it's kind of a no-brainer. Yeah, yeah. I feel like we're crapping on Tom Ball, even though they were they went ten and one. It was a heck of a season for him. But yeah, they with their quarterback knocked out in the second quarter, and he was he was a dual threat. He's one of those guys that makes that thing move, and to still stay competitive and and take it all the way down to the wire. It, it doesn't seem like playoff Tom Ball, but we have a new playoff team down there. It's called Playoff Collins. Had to wait for a two point conversion in week eleven to get into this thing. And now they've pulled off two in a row in this last one in convincing fashion over College Park. They're taking on a Longview team uh, that you saw personally pull a rabbit out of a hat to keep this thing going over there in Longview. Uh, tell me what you think about this one, uh, especially from a Longview perspective, because I Collins has maybe gone as far as I think they can go this year. I mean, I, I think of Longview in this game, and Longview – and I got some I got some hate tweets Ward. I I got invited to do some things to to do things that I don't think I can anatomically do. My yoga oh, no. re regimen is not quite where it <laughs> needs to be to do these things. But I thought Lancaster was two to three scores better than Longview. I mean, it was just a complete collapse by Lancaster. Longview just had all the, you know, the, the football gods smiling at them. So I look at Longview has now had two straight weeks where seven turnovers against Naaman Forrest at home, but win that game by 10, the, the gods smiling at him against Lancaster. If Klein Collins is anything as a, a top 12 to top 14, uh, 6A Houston area team, they should win this yeah. game. They should yeah, win this game if they are just anything like that. But I, I we're, we're talking East Texas versus Houston calibration yeah. at this point. Uh, but yeah. the Klein Collins team that beat College Park by five, six touchdowns should be long. They uh, they never made it into the top 20 the whole year long, so they're not a top 14 team. And there's a thing that we, me and uh, Matt Stepp talk about in the Houston podcast when – Houston teams see East Texas teams coming their way. They, uh, If you've ever seen the movie Friday, they see them as Debo, that guy on the motorcycle that just comes in, takes people's chains, takes whatever they take. They all they all rush together like, oh, boy, Debo's coming. Here comes Debo. And that's what they, they think of the East Texas teams. They're afraid. I mean, they're scared crapless of, of Duncanville and DeSoto. But Duncanville and DeSoto, they, they just take care of business and move on. They don't uh, – Beat the crap out of you and leave you limping off the stage here because they just handle it easily. So, Klein Collins isn't a top 20 team there, so that's what makes it nervous there. By the way, now, I did y'all screw more. that up? Now, in retrospect, I, I, I know y'all got the coaches. coaches. Would they be today a top 20 team? The way they today? played the last. Perhaps today, yeah. Perhaps but I mean, they... you got to know they finished five and five. They, they, and and they weren't know. losing the world, world beaters out there. They were losing to Klein Oak, that you had no respect for about two. 20 minutes ago, you said that didn't respect you at all. Well, they lost to him. So now what do you have to say? Do I have to say what a Longview guy said to you? By the way, I read that tweet from Longview. It said something about, I don't know what the initials stand for, but STFU. I think it means something like silence yourself or something in a rude I mean, way. I don't know. Very disrespectful at the mouth or something. <laughs> I, I called it the Longview Regional. I mean, maybe I yeah, should right. just stick with. How much respect can you get? Yeah. How much respect can you give somebody? There it is. All right. Let's move on to 5A, Division One, Region One, and we got a rematch, buddy. A rematch. We're going to see some rematches in 5A, and this is one of them. Richland and Denton Ryan, you've said all year that, that, that Richland doesn't really match up well with Ryan, but after what you saw against Monterey, you, you feel any way differently because you were 
you weren't too happy with the way Brian played against Monterey. Actually, I was fine with it. I, I complimented him. I thought it, I thought I actually came away more impressed with Monterey than I thought I was coming into it. Come going into it, and remember, Monterey won that district. So you know, you, you're you're looking at these teams. You're looking at what Amarillo's doing. You're looking at what you know what Abilene is doing. Monterey beat all of these teams, Tascosa, right. you know, so they won that, that district. And then you look at the stats and I mean, Ryan probably could have scored another garbage touchdown if they weren't trying to just end the game. And my guy's got Sonic now too. You're, 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 you're getting that 50% Thirsty. off uh, uh you know drink going on. Uh, so I, I had no problem with the way Denton Ryan played, played the game. They, they're running the ball. They take the air out. I think they're, they're a pretty big favorite over Richland. Uh, you know, and, and remember that game against Richland uh, was back when their, uh, that the, the coach unfortunately passed away. And that was all that chaos going on with that. And I think they, they, they took the deep breath that I asked you to take Ward. And I think they've kind of steadied themselves. I think Denton Ryan is a significant favorite over Richland. And when I look at Richland the last couple of weeks, the way they played Arlington Heights, the way they played Amarillo, that defense has started to drop off a little bit uh and, and those games are a little bit more uncomfortably close at times in the second and third quarter than I would have wanted it to be. Den Ryan had no even though the game was score wise at halftime a little bit closer than I would have wanted, that was a good Lubbock Monterey team. I was watching that like okay, you know, like Monterey's got a little something. Den Ryan big. Big. That's a Saturday game at the star. If you guys want to check that one out, two o'clock. Neil Beasley will be there. Somehow that's a country roads game, but we got to appease the dealers. Country Roads takes us to the star this week. Interesting. He's been the star last week for a Country Roads game. But anyway, Region 1, well, I don't know how Alito can go under the radar. Somehow it, it happens. I mean, it, it happened in years past because they're in a district with Fort Worth, Pasco, or some teams that they're uh, bullying, according to <laughs> some coaches and fans. But still, somehow it feels like they're an under radar team. I don't, I don't know why. I haven't talked about them like deeply since they lost to Geyer in game one, but they all they did was mosey through their district and take care of business. Granted, they had trouble against Richland, but they've finished them off. They finished off Abilene. They finished off Chisholm Trail. And the boys in Tescosa don't want you to say this, but you're going to tell me they're going to finish off Tescosa as well. Yeah, they're going to finish off Tascosa. And, you know, you remember Ward last year. I, I got shirt. I have a shirt I could go get, I could go wear with my Alito clock shirt uh, because I called him broken last year. And, and I had a lot of negative things to say about Alito because last year Alito had all of this, you know, Haas Haney and some really – Davon Keys are just D1 talent after D1 talent. And they were just railroading everybody because they were getting on the field and they were better than everybody. But they kept making mistakes and mistakes. And you had Rob. Bobby Jones, a new coach, and you're like, why do they keep making all these mistakes? This year, they don't have quite the talent that they had last year, but they're not making those mistakes. They got back to playing Alito football. I like this version of Alito better than I liked last year's version of Alito, even though this version's, uh, version of Alito is going to have a lot harder time to win a state championship than last year's version of Alito. So this version of Alito, I'm, I'm a fan of. I like watching them play. I like watching their gritty. That offensive line is tough. You know, they hit you up. What I what they call the echo of the whistle ward, you know they they play it to the echo of the whistle. They play hard, and they're going to take care of Tasco. So this is not. But next week is going to be the fun game, whether it's Richland, whether it's Den Ryan. Even if, I mean, Richland played Alito better than uh, Den Ryan did. So I you know I think that at the end of the day, I mean, they're, Den Ryan did blow a two score lead in that game. But I think Alito is going to have a hard time winning next week. But I'll have to break down next week. I'll have to get these data points. But I, I think. Alito may be considered an underdog to a lot of people next week. And I, I want to talk about two weeks from now. So I got to wait for, I got to just keep my quiet myself quiet to December because I want to talk about the Highland Park team that we're going to talk about in a little bit. But first we have a game that's at Birdville, six o'clock start. Frisco Lone Star against Midlothian. Midlothian ended our West Mesquite season. Uh, those poor guys at Wranglers, they got as far as they could go. Red Oak made a little bit of a comeback against Lone Star, but it wasn't enough. Lone Star pulled it out. Uh, your thoughts on this game uh, taking place Friday night? 
man, Midlothian talent wise, this is a team that this is about where they end. You know, I, I think Midlothian's the best team two or three years ago where they almost should have beat Alito was right here in this yeah. third round. This is kind of where they max out Midlothian does. And Midlothian has a lot to be excited about. They got a freshman talent that a lot of people are, are comparing to the, uh, what was that wide receiver that went to Clemson? Wesco. 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 They're right. comparing uh, the, the the freshman to, to Wesco. And uh, I, I just don't think Lone Star, I just don't think Midlothian, ha- even with the system, has the talent to compete with Lone Star. Are they going to score on Lone Star? Yes, they're going to score on Lone Star. But Midlothian would have to play a perfect game. Lone Star would have to make two or three errors. I think Lone Star just has a lot more talent and should uh, beat Midlothian. When Midlothian has played Highland Park, when they played Cedar Hill, it gets a little bit ugly. So I think when they play the really high end talent, which is what Lone Star is, that's where I think uh, Midlothian season is going to end. But Midlothian, an overachieving season, proud of the season for Midlothian. This is a yeah. system season, but I think they just kind of run into the ceiling. Yeah, they got to be happy where they, they wound up here. It was a very good season uh, if they don't pull this one off. Uh, we almost put it into Reedy last week. We had him out. I mean, I had him out at halftime. If I had a shooter at that game, he would have left, and I would have been left with one Reedy touchdown, whatever it was. It's forty-five to seven. Meanwhile, I was at the Highland Park Wakeland game, and I was so thoroughly impressed with their defensive line. Had had Maples, the same guy I saw three weeks earlier, just tear apart Lone Star's defense like it was nothing. Had him on the run. Jack, uh, Jack Morris and, and and Anders Corn are just unbelievable defensive linemen. They get to the ball. They understand the concepts. Uh, it was a fun game to watch. From it's one of those few defensive games where me, where who's shooting tight, doesn't see the wide angle of everything, can still see how dominant the defense is just by the way they're they're flying all over the place. Uh, they're not going to give up a forty-five-seven lead to Reedy, but can Reedy make sure that doesn't happen? You know, a couple of the Wakeland, you, you may have seen the tweets, uh, you know, just were very impressed with that defense that they felt like Highland Park knew. Wakeland's offensive scheme to where they knew the plays that were going to be called. They knew the formations. They could like, call it out. Like, oh, they're, they're about to do this play. And they just converged on him. And it makes it so hard when you have a defense that's so smart, too. I mean, you got the players. You talked about the players. But the defense is so well prepared, so smart. And that's what makes it so hard for these teams that are trying to figure out how are you going to do something on Highland Park? Because you got to throw something completely new at this team in such predictable intervals that you can, you know, like, like, what have they not seen? What are they not prepared for? Uh, I know Alito's got to be thinking about that already. If they're planning, Frisco Lone Star, yes. if they make it, you got you got to find those three to five wrinkles that Highland Park is not going to be ready for that you can take advantage of, and then you got to execute, which is hard enough to do as well. Uh, but I think this, I think Frisco Reedy Magic. Remember two years, Ward? It seemed like every time you went to a Reedy game, you created yes. magical uh, endings, and then against Georgetown, the Reedy Magic was back. I think the Highland Park. Yeah. Defense is just going to be too much for uh, Frisco. It's too much. It seems too much. Now I wasn't as impressed with their offensive line. They they let their guy Buck Randall get dropped left and right uh, in the first half there until they started pulling away. But their defense was just too much, too much. And that's another game that's at the Star Friday night. So why don't y'all just go to the Star, sit there and watch two games Friday, two games Saturday, and then go home, and maybe even watch your little beloved Cowboys practice on whatever day. Go get the go get a hotel at the Omni. Maybe maybe get you can talk to the expense report. Get us a hotel at the Omni. Get a nice room. We can just you know. Well, I need a hotel. Expense it to the big guys. I need a hotel in Dagnet, going near uh, Oklahoma because I'll be up there. Melissa seeing uh, Lovejoy take on Anna. I've actually, unlike Dix, he doesn't usually like to go to games he's already seen once. I've seen this game once from start to finish too. Sixty six, sixty two, Thriller, back in week four. Uh, how much has changed in the eight weeks, nine weeks in between? Uh, you let me know because, this. first of all, looking through some stats of Lovejoy, they've actually developed a running back in, in Ben Adams that I hadn't seen in week four who's over 1,000 yards rushing. So they've developed a running game. But then you have Anna that's got DeAndre Williams and Chumley who have rushed for 1,000 yards each and 39 touchdowns on the ground. So – if you think this is just going to be a pass-happy game, which I don't know who out there is thinking, but you think of Todd Dodds, you think pass-happy, it may not be. You may get some runs. You, whatever you will, you may not get a lot of defense. 
that's the thing, though, because if you asked what's different for both of these teams from week four until week now, it's the defense. I mean, the the way the, Lovejoy, the way they bullied Del Valle, and you know, I think they got like three touchdowns from their defense in that game. Uh, that was just that's you weren't seeing that against Anna in early in the yeah. year in in District uh, Four Five A. And Anna uh, defense, I mean, they shut down Abilene Wiley, they shut down Colleyville Heritage. That's what's gotten better. So I think all of a yeah. sudden you're going to see this game look like the Melissa versus Anna game where all of a sudden you're in the twenties and it's going to come down to kind of turnovers and mistakes and, and things like that. I, th- this is a game where I, 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 who's got the better quarterback and it's got the better quarterback. So in, in games like this, you got to sometimes look at the better quarterback, but I think right now who's got the better defense, who's got the better defensive coaching. I think it's Lovejoy. So what's, I mean, I, I, I'm sitting here, I, mean, I can make the narrative for Anna, and, and I think Alonzo would love me to make the narrative for Anna, because I don't think he would, I think he actually he would prefer no, you're me not, to they're not allowed, Lovejoy. They're not allowed to listen to they're not and allowed to listen to you. I can make the narrative for Lovejoy because I saw them shut down uh, Timberview, who's known for their defense, you know, and, and they were able to score on that. So I think Lovejoy is going to be able to do things against Anna. Can they generate the turnovers? If they can, they should beat them. Because because Anna has been susceptible to turnovers. Well, both of them, if you ask me, because Janicek has 10 picks. Zeandre's thrown nine picks. You know, I love the quarterbacks to throw uh, a lot of touchdowns, but if they're flinging it all over Brett Favre style, and, and also it could go either way, That can whoever puts them off in a, in a key game like this, if they win the turnover battle 2-0 or 3-1, that's going to be trouble for the other team. I just like the fact that Todd Don, and neither none of us expected him not to, but – when I first talked to him in August, the first thing he said to me is, I've heard from some people saying, uh, use this first year to get your feet wet, get adapted to the offense. He said, I'm not coming in here to do that stuff. I'm, year one, we're going for a state title, and he's done nothing but prove that from the get-go. I mean, he played a tough schedule, came out of it one and two, and now he's just he's kind of busted his way through the rest of the season with a loss here and there, or I guess only one other loss. But here we are. We're playing it game number two, and then after you're done with that, you can just drive the short drive down to Prosper to catch out Walnut Grove and Argyle. Uh, Argyle, as you know, I sent you a text, had me a little nervous against uh, Wichita Falls Memorial and Walnut Grove. They had me nervous against Lubbock Cooper. They both had to come back in the second half and make sure they're still playing, but they are still playing, and Prosper gets relatively gets a home game. Yeah, and I think there's a situation where they probably just wanted to flip because, you know, what's between uh, Flower Mound and Prosper, really? You know, I guess you can go to Braswell, right. maybe. Uh, but, you know, they probably didn't want to deal with uh, uh, us coming up. Why didn't a lot of teams stadium. play there? Yeah, Nobody it, ever plays at that stadium. Why is that? They just build it, too. Really a beautiful nice. stadium. I've not even been yeah. there yet. I mean, I've driven by it several times, but, uh, you know, I haven't, I haven't actually covered a game there. Uh, but, you know, Walnut Grove, you look at the Cooper game, you look at the Seguin game, you look at all almost all of their games except for Melissa, they win these one-score games. That's just the style of play that they that, that their football team does. And I think that's going to actually benefit Argyle because Argyle's been winning so many games by four or five scores that they haven't had a chance to really play one of these one one score nail biter games. And now they got that out of the way. I think that's going to benefit them for Walnut Wal- Wal- Grove to take that deep breath ward. Get, go, get, get your call map out. Breathe. Because I, I think Argyle is going to be a, a favorite in this game. I think Argyle will be a favorite, you know, to win the next game as well. Uh, Argyle just has too much talent. They've got the quarterback. They've got the defense. They've got the skill players and they've got the depth. Uh, so I think uh, this is where Walnut Grove's uh, trajectory ends. Great season, Coach Allison, Coach of the Year. Love you guys, but Argyle, I think, is just going to have too much depth. What, what do you make of Warner Grove winning these close games, considering it's such a young team and a freshman leading the quarterback? Is it because they've been thrown in a situation where they don't know any better, they're just out there trying to win, or, or the pressure just doesn't get to them? Great coaching. You know, I mean, I mean, this was a a majority of these kids were going out last year and playing some of these really good teams. They played Gilmer and Salina and Anna already. And, you know, they, they beat the Arkansas State champs last year. And, yeah, they took their licks. You know, we, we saw against Gunner. I mean, you know, they, they got their yeah. – definitely got their licks. But they were playing state championship teams almost every game last year when they were playing that outlaw. And then when once the district schedule started, they're playing all the top state championship teams from all over the – uh, state of Texas. So this is a team that's used to traveling, used to playing good teams, and now they're ready for it. It's kind of when preparation meets opportunity. 
they're not lucky anymore. They're just prepared, and their coaching staff has done a great job. But Argyle has got all that pedigree that Walnut Grove has, and then a little bit more. They got some more athletes too. So yeah. I think uh, uh, the quarterback's going to be a little bit more, uh, a little bit more skilled. And I think that Argyle's defensive line is just going to send send Hayes Hackney running, uh, and it's going to put a lot on Cam Newton. And I think the the linebackers are going to be good enough to keep uh, Cam Newton from having a big day. So it's going to be hard for Walnut Grove to consistently uh, drive down the field. So I think Argyle wins from a, a kind of a medium game. I, I can see a blowout. I, Walnut Grove's only going to win one way. They're only going to win this game by one score. But I can see Argyle winning this game big and small. All right. Well, that'll be a fun one out in Prosper. Uh, you go down to Region Two and Division Two. You got Sox still kicking it, and they're playing Marshall, who let the Midlothian Paradise think they were going to win, and, and then they said, "No, you're not going to win," and they went ahead and scored the the last three touchdowns there to go advance. South Little Cliff wasn't tested by Huntsville, even though I said they would be. They weren't. Matter of fact, on my shooter that went down there was very upset because the Huntsville coach uh, he thought he was something. Spe- he had two. Uh, Cops flanking him the entire game, even on the sidelines, as if something was going to happen. Like he was the biggest thing since the president of the United States. He had to get guys flanking him everywhere he walked, but it didn't work out. They still ended up getting bombed out, hit by a sniper known as South Oak Cliff, and they took care of business. Now you think they're probably going to take care of business here in Marshall too, and just kind of wait for that next round. Yeah, when, when when you really dig into that Marshall and Midlothian Heritage game, Midlothian Heritage is not a team that's known for their defense, and they held Marshall to 150 yards in the in that game. And I mean, the 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 poor. I, I posted this on Twitter. I'm surprised the morning news let this go through. But I mean, there was a sentence in, in the paragraph in there that said. Due to a poor coaching decision, they went for it on like fourth and twenty from their own five, and you know then Midlothian or then Marshall scored their last touchdown. I mean that that does sound like a bad coaching decision if you're going for it on fourth and you know long from your you know that deep in your field when your defense has held them uh, pretty much all day, uh, you know, and, and getting those three and outs and letting them kind of score that window dressing touchdown. I mean, I, I wasn't looking at the down and distance and maybe there's only a minute and a half left in the game or something. So you got to go for it. You know, I, I didn't see all the stats, but uh, Marshall's win over Midlothian Heritage was not as impressive as the score might have indicated. Uh, so I think now that you've got South Oak Cliff, the fact that Marshall only got 150 yards on Midlothian Heritage, what are they going to do to South Oak Cliff? Like, where, where are they going to get their offense against South Oak Cliff? Whereas South Oak Cliff's got the big, brooding offensive linemen. They've got playmakers. They've got skill players. Name your score on this one. South Oak Cliff is going to get a one big on this one. Now, it's kind of an afterthought because the other side of the bracket is where business is really picking up. Yeah, this one looks like a thriller. I didn't even check to see where this game was at, but it looks... It's in Louisiana, board. Is it in Louisiana? They're playing in another it's state. It's in are, are, so are, are, are we are we going to go get our Alexandria Inside High School sports uh, yeah. over there on in Central Louisiana to get get a shooter out for this one? Yeah, we have to dig for wisdom. I'm mad at you, by the way, country, Ward, because you should correct me on something. Stuff. Because like, what did you not say? We, we talk about that. One of our ongoing jokes on the thing is like, you'll just call Bally's and you'll, you'll do some wheeling and dealing and whatnot. They, they've apparently been Bally's all year. They're like some other like FanDuel or something. And now I hear like this, this game, uh, the, the, the Willis versus the Soto game was on FanDuel. I'm like, what's FanDuel? I'm having to Google all this. Like what's going on here? And you know, the state championships are on th- this new FanDuel. What, what happened to Bally's? What happened to Bally's award? What'd you do to them? I don't know. I call this. I call what they used to be called. That's why I keep. That's what. That's what the email comes in at. I call them what they used to be called. I still call them the Redskins instead of the Commanders. But Bally's has moved on to call themselves FanDuel or something rather. Teamed up with some sort of merge deal. But you figured it out. It took you twelve weeks. But you're on board now. And maybe they're sending somebody out to this deal. Who do you think comes out of this one? I kind of think Texas High, but PNG is, is the man. So you always say. Got to knock the man off. Can you do it? And then I look at the second level. And the second level I look at is, what is the rest of their district done? And who else in their district is left? They're all gone. And and they're all gone fairly convincingly. You know, I mean, Huntsville got slammed. Niederland got slammed. Uh, I mean, like... 
Montgomery and, and then like, so all kinds of, you know, it wasn't competitive. Uh, so I think that Texas high, e- even Kaufman, I mean, PNG got up big on Kaufman and then, you know, a little bit of fourth quarter uh, scores, uh, but Texas high, I think it's just too complete and they played a good enough schedule. Uh, I like Texas high in this game. That's why I call it the Texas high yeah. regional award. I'm going to stick with it. PNG did. did not do anything to win me back over. I got you. And I know Sack wants a piece of PNG, but they may not get it. They're going to have to do the te- they they want a piece of Texas High, because that's a bad matchup for them, to be honest. I mean, I Texas say, High might be a slight be? favorite. What do you think they play that game? Tyler Rose? Yeah, maybe maybe, maybe, maybe they'll come out here. Maybe maybe Marcus Marauder Stadium. I hear Coach Stanford has a fondness yeah, for that boy. place. This dude is tripping. Not going to happen. All right, let's move on, shall we? Let's go to 4A. Uh, Division One, Stephenville. Are we still all on board on Stephenville? You're a little shaky about them from time to time. Are we still all on board here with Stephenville going all the way to play Salina, or is it scary now? I think West Plains is good enough because West Plains uh, just completely destroyed uh, Brownwood last week, and now they're about to probably destroy Land Passes, which is every team in their district. So I think we're going to have a really good calibration for a West Plains versus Stephenville uh, regional final. And West Plains is one of those teams that they're hit, they're 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 looking good at the right time. I think that's now a one score Stephenville kind of an advantage. Uh, but ask me next week after I get. A little bit more data after I've seen them play uh, Brownwood, then I'm going to see them play uh, Land Passes uh, and burn it. They didn't do anything, so we, we're not going to get to see them play them. Uh, but you know, they're just going through kind of the gauntlet, kind of like Highland Park is having to go through the Frisco ISD gauntlet to get there. You know, they're going to have to beat all three of those uh, five five A schools. Stephenville's going to have to beat, or West Plains is going to have to beat uh, all three of these uh, four four A schools. Uh, so ask me next week. I think it's a lot closer than I did previously. Okay, I will ask you next week. Meanwhile, Salinas just doing things. I mean, they're they're like a, a runaway freight train here. They were going to play Aubrey. Aubrey's a nice little squad, but I just I can't see them hang with Salinas. Salinas is playing good. This is their this is the Collins Complex game at three p.m. So sun will be a factor in the first half or shadows at least. And then Alvarado's got Sulphur Springs. So seven four A's doing really well uh, with Sulphur Springs advancing past the past Springtown, and they're taking on Alvarado now, who's you know, we, we talked about how they got going there. The guy hadn't made a field goal all year, made three of them in this game, including the game winner. Your thoughts on these two games? Yeah, I mean, we already saw Salina versus Aubrey, and there's really been nothing that kind of indicates that Aubrey's gotten six touchdowns better or Salina's gotten six touchdowns worse. Uh, so I think Salina's probably going to bully this. Why are they playing this game in Denton? Ward? They're both having to drive by each other to, to go yeah, there. They should exactly. be playing this game on a pasture on 380, just just right there. <laughs> or or maybe Carico. <laughs> go play this game at Carico. At least you get to be yeah, on Yeah, nobody wants to go there. I don't know what to deal with that. It's about make a nice new stadium, and they don't want nobody playing in it but Braswell. That's crazy. Brazos anyway. got 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 a uh, got a lease or something on that stadium that don't want to let anybody in there. Uh, but Sulphur Springs versus Alvarado is infinitely interesting uh, because I was not impressed with Alvarado. Alvarado should not have won that game. First half, they looked great, but they got wore down. They play a lot of their kids, Cardea, Collier. Uh, both ways. I mean, you, you get worn down, and Sulphur Springs has the track athletes to go, uh, but man, it's going to be hard to pick against Alvarez, but it's not going to be hard to pick against uh, Salina. Salina has got, I think, even right now, and, and I and I wouldn't have agreed with this going into it, Salina's got the easier route to the state semifinals than Stephenville does, yeah. because uh, I think West Plains is going to give Stephenville a little bit of a hassle. None of these teams are going to give uh, give Salina hassle. So I think uh, Salina is going to uh, comfortably go to the state semifinals. Because they've seen these teams before. So it's not like they're playing some wild uh, wild West Texas team that they haven't seen before. They're playing teams in their own district now from probably from here until they get to Stephenville or West Plains or whoever they play. So, yeah, I agree. They're just on another level right now, too. Uh, let's go to region. Let's go to Division Two, Region 1. You got a Benbrook Rock game. Benbrook's still playing, man. They're still going strong. And then Grant's playing Glen Rose as we try to inch closer to another Glen Rose uh, Brock game. Glen Rose had all they could handle there against Seminole, right? 
Yeah, a uh, shout out to Benbrook, first of all, because this is Fort Worth ISD. Yeah. A lot of people, you know, might think Benbrook, which is a city, uh, you know, it's like, you know, it's like Flower Mounds in Louisville ISD. Well, Benbrook is in uh, Fort Worth ISD, even though it's his own city. Getting to the third round of the playoffs, I mean, this is unprecedented. Salute Benbrook. I mean, these are the fun teams that are fun to watch. A lot yeah. of people like to give Fort Worth ISD the business. Look at Benbrook. I mean, Benbrook is is doing some good things right now. To me, an upset over uh, Greenwood, and they'd hang on. I mean, they got up 24 nothing and had to uh, hang on at the end. But they did it. Uh, I think they're going to be a big underdog to Brock. I think Glenn Rose is going to be a big underdog to Graham. I think we're uh, headed toward Brock Graham, too. Maybe a Country Roads game again. We'll find out. We'll find out as the filming goes. Will it be more competitive, though? That'll be the big question. Let's hope. Let's hope no goose eggs are thrown up there. That Benbrook game gets to be played at that sweet new Godly stadium that just came out. So that'll be sweet to see, too, if you go out there and support Benbrook and see a nice new stadium. Come on, Fort Worth, step it up. That's who you're following now, unless you're still following North Crowley and Crowley, which you probably are. All right, let's move on to uh, Region 2. Sunnyvale is still playing ball. They're going against Van. They're at Mesquite Memorial. Nice little 2 o'clock start. I might even throw myself on this game. No, I can't. I've already committed to something else. I just started saying Mesquite Memorial in my head, and I started thinking about a nice meal. God, it's no wonder I'm so fat. Pleasant Grove's taking on Carthage. Debo coming from the East Texas. Tell me what you think about these games and uh, and specifically the Sun Sunnyvale Van game. Van and Sunnyvale already played this year, and Van beat them up pretty good. Uh, was that a country road game? I feel like that might have been. It was not. It should have been. I mean, Sunnyvale and Van. It should have been. The Van Vandals back then. But Sunnyvale, I mean, they had a softball, you know, Maupin, uh, who I found out, Greg Riddle, thank you for this great fact, is like the son of a legendary Bushland volleyball coach. You know, Bushland is known for their volleyball program, so comes from a great pedigree. And so his improvement from week two, week three to week 12 is the factor where I think you could honestly say, okay, I think Sunnyvale is going to get better and able to beat Van after Sunnyvale was able to beat Gilmer. But Van is also going to have the confidence knowing, okay, now we don't have to get past Gilmer because Gilmer's kind of been their Achilles heel. That's where they can't get past. Now we're playing a team that we've already beat this year and that we beat kind of consistently over the last couple of years. So I think Van is going to have confidence. Sunnyvale is going to have confidence. It's going to be fun. But at the same time, it's like you got the JV on the top half of the bracket. Pleasant Grove and Carthage are probably two of the top three teams in the state of Texas. So you got that game going on on the bottom half of the bracket, which is just going to be, it's like you got Cody Rhodes and Roman Reigns down here. And then you got Big Bronson Reed and, you know, Seth Rollins up here, which is a nice little match. You got Roman Reigns and Cody Rhodes right here with Pleasant Grove and Carthage. It's going to be fun. But you got a Ric Flair theory, Ward. Give me Carthage. Give me Sunnyvale to get past Van. But I think Carthage is still where it all ends. Where it all ends. There's people in the top brackets got to put the blinders on. Don't pay any attention to what's going on down there. Just get past your one game there. I can take it. Bushland, huh? the volleyball champions of the world. By the way, I'm going to mention something about volleyball. I went out there and I had a blast. I covered the state tournament at Garland Saturday. Uh, well, boy, did I get the business. I tell you what, I understand that I cover a lot of football under the umbrella of Inside High School Sports, but we wouldn't be doing a podcast on, on volleyball or baseball or anything like that. We'd be doing podcasts on football and people tune in. So I went out there. I had a blast. We had, some, we had, three, we had two state champions and one that didn't quite make it with McKinney North. I got the business all day. I had at least six fans and one media member come up to me and say comments like, uh, oh, you mean you actually picked a state volleyball game over a second-round playoff football game? And I was like, okay, I'll take that one. And then the next person was like, oh, I didn't think you even knew volleyball existed. I was like, it got to the point where I was like, man, I should just load up my stuff and just head on home. I'm taking it on the chin. But no fault of the – the athletes, they were they were terrific, and it was great games. And boy, Byron Nelson has got themselves a heck of a volleyball player. And, and Kylie Kleckner, that girl is awesome. Uh, it was scaring me. I was way up top the way she was pounding them down. She's going to Washington. She's a finalist for Gatorade Player of the Year this year. She's just a junior. So were that you was able to pretty film sweet. for the Houston show for that like grand. I got a couple of here. Oh, he knows what's going on. I shot that too, my man. There you what go. What do you not know? 
What does he not know? Plano East should have made it to the state championship this year. I mean, they it, Keller beat Allen, oh, beat Keller, Plano East beat Allen. We should have been there. We we do well, we do well at the Coldwell Center. Center Award. Things go well at the Coldwell one Center for Plano East. Just saying. One hour, one hour into this, and Plano East gets brought up. Hey, That's we're undefeated in basketball again. It's probably a record. All right, three A Division One, Region One, Vernon in shallow water. Take me to. The shallow water. Y'all remember that joint? No. All right. And then we got Paradise and Jim Ned on the back end. What do you? Ha- what's your feelings on these two games? Shallow water is the big dog. Paradise beating Bushland, the last play of the game. Shout out to Paradise. I mean, Austin Iglesias, my guy last year. I thought Paradise was done. You lose him, you, you, you lose it. But here we are, Paradise making it to the third round again. I think Paradise has a really good chance to beat Jim Ned. If they can beat Bushland, they should be able to beat Jim Ned. I think Shallow Water is kind of that, that big dog there. Uh, so give me Paradise to continue their role, but give me Shallow Water to take care of business. And I think Shallow Water's probably got a little bit too much uh, for Paradise and I think they'll take it uh, to, the, to the end of the region. But, man, Paradise is a great story right now. Paradise yeah, by the Dashboard Light. You remember that song, Ward? Talking about songs? Well, Meatloaf? Ain't no, no doubt about it. We were doubly blessed. Oh, brother. Bear right, the 17 and we were bare the dressed. Region 2. Talk so, to Ward, me. Sing we're it with gonna, us. Well, Meatloaf. We're, we're leaving I couldn't do it until I look up the lyrics. All right, your thoughts here. We got Malakoff from East Texas taking on Jefferson. <laughs> we got we got Liberty Island against uh, Winsboro. Give me your started thoughts. Here. Ward, you started singing. I'm I'm sorry. I won't start. I'll I'll never sing again. Although my voice is like a songbird, it, it just is. got shot. Remember, we're talking about 4A Division Two, and, and we're talking about Carthage and Pleasant Grove and how you got that matchup. You've basically got four of the top eight teams in the state of Texas all playing each other right here. You got uh, Jefferson and Liberty Isla, who are very good teams, state-ranked East Texas teams. Malikoff and Winsboro are our, our ward, our DFW North Texas number one and number two. Team. So you might consider this all East Texas. It's DFW versus Seems East like Texas it. right East here. Texas. And I got the DFW schools winning. Malakoff versus Winsboro rematch. Uh, but it's going to be tough. I think all these games are one-score games. A lot of East Texas going on. I love it. All right, 3A Division two, Region two. We got this in here because Toller's still playing ball. Toller Holiday and then Gunter and Jacksboro. These are going to be some sweet. Are we going to see Gunter and Toller? No. I think we are yes. actually Ward because My Holiday. I, I was on the you. Holiday bandwagon Ward, I, but they almost lost to Blue Ridge. Blue Ridge was flexing them in the second half. Credit to Holiday for making it happen, winning that game. Holiday is a Wichita Falls area powerhouse. They know how they they, they know how to do this, but so does Toller. And I think Toller's got bigger athletes and they got playmakers. Member, I mean, we're, we're not talking about uh, Toller as much this year because they're a little bit further west, but they got, I mean, they're, they're, they got their stud running back, you know, I mean, Peyton Brown, I mean, he's still there. Yeah, uh, so, still I mean, they, they got, they, they got, they got a couple of key players uh, that are going to lead them. I like Toller. I like Gunter. I think we're going to have Gunter versus Toller. And I got to go to that, right, Ward? Maybe I mean, I, I got to go. Maybe that's the country roads. I'll have Neil Beasley go with you. Maybe that's the country roads. It's got to be somewhere uh, right smack in the middle of the town, right? Northwest ISD or something? Northwest somewhere. ISD. Let's do it. Let's do it. All right, that's all we got for you, guy. That's all we have. We broke them all down for you. How about 2A? And, uh, because if Munster can beat Albany this week, yeah, I think they're going. Munster. I think they're going to AT and T. So I'm very excited about Munster. Uh, uh, a big upset in uh, in uh, New Diana losing, uh, and uh, I think Honey Grove has a really good chance in 2A Division One to continue and represent DFW. We may have DFW representation at every state game. Honey Grove, Munster, keep going, Malakoff. I, I think we, you go down the <laughs> Gunter. Uh, you keep going up. Gunter, and, and Salina, I, I think have a really good chance. Hebron. Well, I may have shot you on that one. Don't hey, if Munster Southern, makes it, man. South Oak Cliff, Denton Ryan, Toledo, or Richland. Never know. Or Tascosa. Uh, definitely not that. 
Hey, listen, if Munster makes up sauerkraut for everybody, I'll bring some over to the house. We'll throw it on uh, some sort of hot dog you're cooking up over there. It'll be sweet, man. That was the my old favorite, crap by bowl. the way. That was my favorite piece from last year when y'all did the Lindsay Munster yeah. piece that Neil did. That was fun. We 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 need, we need to get Neil back to those kind of pieces where he gets to go eat food as part of things. We got to get him some yeah. food, Ward. We got to find some good exactly. food places and get that as part of our country roads. Most of the time, he was doing these things. He had to stop at DQ, so that's probably about the only place around. So he'll show himself eating a blizzard or something. Dixie, have a good Thanksgiving, man, because I know you're going to be out somewhere Friday. Make sure you're not too sluggish. Get out there to these games. Be on the top of your game. I have a feeling you're going to go to two Friday. Will you go to two Saturday? Who knows? I got to wait. Probably this guy one. Up. I'll probably watch number two on TV, uh, but uh, probably uh-huh. one on Saturday, and then I'll, we'll watch FanDuel or whatever Bally's uh, for for a little bit of evening game uh, footage. Especially since so many people are going to be at that game, I'll probably just watch it on TV and get the uh, same effect out of that. Uh, but it's going to be fun. And then probably starting next week, you're going to see me slide into a little bit more small school Digsy. Uh, I'm excited about how some of these small small school games are starting to uh, take fold. Uh, but uh, we did it, Ward. I mean, we have pretty much uh, we we nailed the regionals. Uh, and, and next yeah. week we're gonna have we're gonna go back to the brackets, but we're gonna have eight teams. But it's taking us all the way to AT and T. I think what they call yeah. that the journey to states. What Dave Campbell's is trying to get us journey to hashtag to with a two and a four. That just looks really weird. I, I don't know. Uh, I can't deal with numbers like that. Forget all that. We're going to state, man. Are you going to state? Well, you got a couple weeks to think that. I got a pass waiting for you. I'll get you in there, guy. And you do your thing. The people want to see you. I've already told you that. The people want to see you. So if I get you a they pass, they want to see state, me at volleyball. I need you in with the They want to see crown. me with Plano East at volleyball in my full inside they high school. They didn't get a sports. chance. They didn't get a chance because you all got bounced fairly early. So Heller. Here's what it is. Heller. James Harris. All right, brother. Have a good Thanksgiving, man. We'll holler at you next week.